All right, so. All right, nerds. So today we're going to talk about satellites, and basically we're going to explain here why um, the satellite has to be at the height where it is with its period of revolution. Now, period, remember, is the amount of time it takes for something to repeat itself. And we're also going to talk. Basically, we're going to talk about why the satellite dish must be pointing all the time when it's communicating with it at the at the satellite however that only is important for one direction and we'll talk about that in a minute okay so overview all right so satellites anything that orbits the earth or orbits a planet and the moon is our natural satellite but there are about 700 there are about 750 770 active satellites at the moment so basically it's a repeater station your satellite so your signal comes from one gets sent along starts to attenuate so it gets weaker and then we use a repeater station to do that or to change direction well that's the function of a, of a satellite so about 750 um, and most of these are communication satellites and there's you've also got a mix of GPS and weather satellites so satellites give us a wide coverage of area there is a slight delay in transmission of about a third of a second both directions and amazingly the transition so transit transmission cost it's independent of distance it doesn't matter how far you, away you are whereas with hard line like sorry hard hardware transmission so like you know power cable or cables distance costs so the further you away the more it costs all right so the earth sends messages um up using via uplink so that okay so here, so the, the sending of, of signals, we call that uplink, and we send these messages here in what we call in the gigahertz range. So it's the frequency, so frequency equals uh, gigahertz. Now, the satellite receives it, and then either it transmits it back. So it sends the signal back towards wherever it's going, and that's downlink, okay? so. Uplink is where we send the signals to the satellite. Downlink is where we send it back. Now, as we said, the satellite needs this, the dish needs to point directly at the satellite if it's sending something. But it sends it, it sends it down in this large array, this large area, and that's called a footprint. So everywhere this footprint is useful, like it's a useful area to be to receive the signal. But one thing you'll notice here is there's this blank path where it's no good to receive it back and that's because the they'll start to balance each other. Anyway, we don't need to talk about that. Okay, so the bands. The size of the satellite dish is related to the transmission of frequency. So basically if you've got a really big dish, it's for a really large wavelength. And that relates to frequency because the inverse relationship. So as frequency increases, wavelength decreases. So as the frequency goes up, you get a smaller and smaller dish. As the way, as the frequency decreases, you get a larger and larger dish. Um, and as we said, so antennas, by the way, is the proper word for these dishes. They actually are antennas, and they gather the signals. So there are three bands that we talk about. There is the C band, the KU band, and the KA band. Now KA band, they run with a very very large frequency. And they consequently actually have a really small dish because they have a very small bandwidth, a uh, small wavelength. The KU frequent uh, KU band has that sort of middle of the road, and they've got these sorts of dishes here. Um, they got that size dish there that you, know, you can fit on your house. And the C band, they've got these big ones, uh, and that's because their frequency is quite small. So again, like four to eight gigahertz is not, not too small, but comparatively. Now, here are the, the issues that we have with them. So, the KA band, again, high equipment, okay? Um, it's just, it's expensive to run. The C band, like the, you know, they're really large, so they interfere with stuff on the ground. Whereas the, the smaller KU band, like, they attenuate due to rain. KA is ideal, of course, but the... It is very it's prohibitively, prohibitively expensive. Now, uplink is highly directional. In other words, this is why your satellite needs to point directly at it because it sends actually a focused beam like this. It sends a 
a focused beam, whereas when the satellite transits back, it's the broad footprint. Um, so downlink can have a large footprint, and, and quite large to be honest, but the uplink is highly directional, it needs to focus beam. So that's why it has to point at it. So there are three, orbit, three orbits that we're concerned with. You've got the low Earth orbit, which is polar, okay? So it just goes, swings around the poles, um, or from pole to pole. We have the medium Earth orbit, and again, it goes larger, but it's a moving satellite. It's, it's not a, in the one spot at all times. But then we have geostationary. Geostationary is always in the same spot above the equator. Okay, it's always in the same spot above the equator. So, given that a geostationary orbit covers about 42% of the Earth's surface, we could actually use three geostationary satellites to have 100% Earth coverage. And you can see here, so this satellite covers that much, this one covers that much, and this one covers that much. They overlap, the whole thing is sorted. All right, so, basically, this is the way it works, all right? So if you want to get a message from one place to another, you send it up via satellite, up here, hits the satellite, it comes back to what we call a hub, which then basically sends it to where it needs to be. All right. So the direction of the dish, now they have to be, so as a geostationary satellite is, it orbits at the same, same speed the Earth does, as the Earth rotates, um, its position in the sky is always the same. So it's, it has to be an equatorial orbit, and it's always the same. And this means that the receiving dish on Earth um, needs to be able to send it about 36,000 kilometers, okay, in a direction, okay? So it's always going to face that same distance, same direction. has to face the same direction. And if it doesn't, it will miss the satellite. Because again, remember those large dishes, they, they fire a, a very focused narrow beam. All right, so basically the satellite has to remain in orbit above the equator, which means it's going to be about 36,000 kilometers. And this is what we call a uh, Lagrangian. That's actually two word there. Should have had this written down. Look up Lagrangian point. Give yourself a definition of that. Sloppy writing. It's a Lagrangian point. Um, Let's see if we can pull it. No, it's not happening. So Lagrangian point, look that up. Now, basically in this orbit, the satellite travels at a speed that keeps it in the same position. Now, gravity is pulling it down, and it's falling towards the Earth at all times. But because of the rotation of the Earth, where it falls is technically just over the horizon, so it keeps going around and around. Um... Oh, we're here, so. Sorry. So because it's going in the same position, you can actually point a satellite dish, the antenna, directly at it at all times. Now, as we said, the Earth's gravity is pulling it towards the Earth, the center of the Earth, but the rotation of the Earth is adding momentum to it, which is causing it to fall directly over the horizon at all times. All right. So basically, oh, we'll talk about how they stay in position because they do move out of position. Satellites have little tiny rockets on there that, you know, they push gas out. That's what a rocket is. A rocket pushes gas out of a small opening. And they use this, this gas propulsion to just readjust itself at all times. And, yeah, they, they stay in the one position. And they have to stay in the one position because the satellite antenna, the dish, doesn't move. It keeps focusing right at it. All right. There was a lot there. Um, make sure you look up the Grand Gym point. Give yourself a definition of that. And, yeah, we'll see you in class.